this week, Stogie Geeks episode 330. Drew and I interview Eric Bay of Black Star Line Cigars. Very excited to hear this story because persistence is key, could be the message. Eric decided to follow his love of the leaf and start a company with the help of his childhood friend. It became possible. He says, and I quote, it literally took him a year of cold calling on the factory until Sandy from L Titan had given them a shot and then they welcomed them to the family. Make sure you visit their website. I'll give that to you during the episode. Drew and I are excited to talk to Eric and Stogie Geeks episode 330 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And we- Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 330. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. Very happy to be here. Two episodes in a row back in studio. <laughs> Getting some sense of normalcy. Um, I have my mask in my backpack as I am enjoying some cigars. And Drew and I have a chance to uh, interview Eric Bay from Black Line Cigars. But before I introduce Eric, I want to introduce our, my friend and yours, the little dockhead kid from Texas, <laughs> Mr. Drew Gavin. What's up? Hey, what's up, Joe? What's up, Eric? Uh, hey. Just here in Texas, enjoying this beautiful weather that we have from the, uh, what a difference from last week, where we had nothing but constant rain for about five days straight. Uh, other than that, looking forward to uh, speaking with Eric about Black Star Line cigars, and I got introduced to these sticks here about a month back, and man, I've been on a hunt for some more. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, I uh, You had um, uh, introduced me to Eric and his line when you shipped me some sticks, and I was, like, very excited to have him here on the show. Eric, welcome to Stoya Geeks. And thanks for having me. I'm no, really, th- really happy to be here. Thanks for coming. You're actually on the fast track, Eric. This is a true story, right? We've had mm. We've been exposed to your company, what, 30 days or so? Right, Drew, yeah. about thirty days because I got a shipment Correct. from you. Correct. I got a shipment from you three weeks ago, right? Yeah, my Matt. Yeah, so three weeks ago. So and then all of a sudden, poof, Eric's here. So and we booked this yeah. interview in advance. So we we, yeah. we we actually booked it. If you're if 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 from a programming note perspective, we booked him in the same week when we both of us had the sticks. Uh, and we called each other. We were like, we, we got to get him on. Like, get him on, get him on, get him on. And then uh, I got his phone number, and he picked up the phone. And I'm like, yo, 
it's Joe from Story Geeks. You're like, who? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and, and I'm like, uh, who are you? And he's like, I'm Eric. And I was like, hey, I'm smoking your stick. I kind of like it. You want to come on the show? Sure. And that's really how it happened. And so, uh, Eric, thank you for, for moving your, your schedule around and, and for, for coming here. Uh, Drew, Drew and I are both, like I said, we, we, we've had the stick. Um, you do have more offerings. We are doing our uh, study geek homework as to where to get them so that we don't send mm -hmm. our listeners on a wild goose chase. I don't like to do that. You know what I mean? I don't, right. I don't like to be like, hey, this is what I'm smoking. You can, by the way, you can't have it. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> that. You know, so uh, um, if you could start thinking about where the listeners can, can get them, that would be uh, awesome as well. But uh, tell us about how you got started with uh, Black Star black star line cigars a little bit of the mm -hmm. name and and your your cold calling story for you story geeks you want to go to uh b s l cigars.net check them out you got to read his bio as far as how he got started because it captured my interest it will be on the story geeks website if you go to storygeeks.com forward slash three three zero which is this episode you can uh have a link to the site as well but eric how did you get started with your persistence in cold calling good old-fashioned cold calling um well many of the jobs that i had uh, throughout the years, so they were all in sales. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm I'm used to doing business to business uh, sales. Uh, I was a pharmaceutical sales rep, um, so I'm used to chasing people and, and trying to get my message across to people and, and getting them to buy from me or or accept what I got to say to them. So uh, that's just been a historic thing for me as far as careers. Uh, and then funny thing is, I'm a firefighter now, so I don't even do uh, business sales like that anymore. So. Um, <clears throat> But um, with El Titan de Bronze, we spent a lot of time calling them. Uh, we had they had a gatekeeper there. Her name was uh, Kitty, if I remember right, and she would always tell us that uh, Sandy was unavailable because her mother uh, wasn't uh, was I mean because Sandy's mother wasn't uh, doing well. So we kept calling and we kept getting the same story every time. So basically, uh, I was getting ready to give up. Really, it was about a year in and. You know, something told me to just go ahead and call one more time. So we called, and it turns out Kitty didn't work there anymore. And Giselle, um, Sandy's uh, daughter, answered the phone. And she said, hey, you want to talk to Sandy? She's right here. Handed the phone to Sandy. And then Sandy uh, started talking to us, and she remembered that we sent her flowers. Uh, and that's what really uh, opened the doors for us. And she she welcomed us with open arms and said she would help us do a blend. Mm. You know, that, it's funny. Um, similar, similar background, right? In regards to mm -hmm. to the world and the universe. You know, you just ask it, right? And say, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who you know look at sales and say, oh, well, that's just a salesman or whichever. And there's a lot of the hardcore salespeople, uh, which which is my world outside of Stogie Geeks, mm -hmm. where you know it's amazing if you like you had a vision in your head and you went for it and it literally took yeah. you like you said almost a year to go for it but but you know you yes. you ask because the answer is no if you don't ask right always right. which which right. should should be the lesson here it's always no if you're afraid to ask or you think i can't do this or you think the barrier to entry is going to be too big or starting your right. own line is too crazy of an idea i'm sure you had tons of friends in your circle of influence uh yeah i want to start a cigar company you want to do a what like you know what I mean? The, you, you, why? Like you, you have a job. Yeah. Like why? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then yeah. if you ever had a chance to speak to old timers, they tell you, you know, you want to make a million dollars in the cigar industry, start with two million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so 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 yeah. it's 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 interesting how uh, you got started. So take us through um, uh, what you were looking for for like flavor profile, brand recognition, the beginning of forming a company. Um, with the cigars, I like, um, traditionally, I like strong cigars. I like real flavorful cigars. So um, with El Milagro, El Milagro means the miracle. Those are my, my two blends that are through uh, uh, El Titan de Browns. So I have a Mexican San Andreas and I have a Sun Grown Habano. So I wanted two cigars that would meet two different types of cigar smokers. So the Mexican San Andreas is a stronger uh, cigar than the uh, Sun Grown Habano. So 
I chose the Mexican San Andreas uh, wrapper because it's uh, it's on a lot of cigars that I like. That that type of wrapper is, is what I like, uh, Mexican San Andreas. So that's why we chose that one. The Sun Grown Habano, we chose that one um, because, like I said, I wanted to, to, to get a cigar that would fit smokers that didn't want to smoke a full body cigar. So it's a medium full body, a medium full cigar. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, so that was my goal. Even with the war, Witch, I wanted a, a totally different, uh, cigar that would meet another type of a smoker, you know? So, um, as far as the name of the company, black star line cigars, I, I got it from Marcus Darby. Uh, Marcus Darby had a shipping company, uh, called, uh, the black star line. So that's why I chose that one. The Black Star Line uh, is actually a spinoff of the name of the White Star Line, which is the company that uh, that is affiliated with the Titanic. So uh, Marcus Garvey took the took the White Star Nine Line name and changed it to the Black Star, and that's how he started his ship. Mm. So that's why I was paying homage homage to uh, Marcus Garvey with the name. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. It's it, it it it's an interesting name and 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 you know uh, I've had the opportunity to have the wall, which Drew Drew is going to ask you some some questions on that and uh, okay. take it from here. I'm not going to ask Drew if he has a question because he always says no and then starts up with a question. <laughs> if you watch Story Geeks, <laughs> so Drew, what do you have to say to Eric? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just with the War Witch. So, is that also out of the uh, uh, El Titan, the Bronze House, or is that something that uh, I think you're? I think there, are, there was a mention of Ag Agonor Agonorsa Lee Factory. Yeah. Is so the the story what? of um, War Witch is uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm associated with Sean Williams from Cohiba. So uh, okay. I ran into Sean, Sean Williams here in Chicago. So we're talking and he asked, you know, what were my plans? What did I want to do next? So I'll tell him I wanted to come out with another stick. Um, but I didn't know where I wanted to do it. So he named a bunch of places. He's like, you know, you want to go to Placencia? You want to go to Aganorsa? He named some other places. So I said, hmm, I, let's, let's go through Aganorsa. I like, I like tobacco from Aganorsa Leaf. So sure. yeah. uh, the next day, Sean texts me and he said, hey, Terrence Riley is waiting for you to call him. Uh, he was like, I talked to him personally about you and your company, and um, I gave him a great recommendation. And he said, you know, he's waiting for you to call him. So I called Terrence, yeah. and um, you know, Terrence was really, really eager to talk to us. And uh, you know, we uh, he asked what type of blend that I want. So I I put together two different blends. One is the current version of War Witch, and then there was another version. So I got mm -hmm. the samples. And I smoked them. I, I loved War Witch from Inception. The second blend, it was it, it wasn't good to me. So we we decided to scrap that one. Um, but yeah. War Witch, I I didn't have to make any changes to it at all. The way I sent it to them, and then the way they rolled it, and and everything, it it, it came out perfect. You know, um, yeah. From the flavor profile, uh, one thing I didn't expect it to do was it for it to be because uh, I, I asked for a medium full stick for that one. I didn't yeah. expect it to be so deceptively strong. Like it's 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 stronger than what I expected, but it's a pleasant strong, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. From that, yeah, from that perspective on my side, because I'm I'm a strong. I like the very heavy body cigars as well, but this one here, I mean, not only was it you know medium to full body, uh, the construction, uh, the smoke content. I mean, all those mm -hmm. things. Um, played in to the cigar itself. I mean, I, I mean, to hit it a home run right off the bat with this one, I mean, to me, was just like, you know, Aganorsa. I mean, it says a lot for Aganorsa, you know, what they do there. And, uh, of course, yeah. they, have, they, they do other cigar lines as well. But, yeah, mm -hmm. the, way they, the way that this came out, uh, a box press, because when I first took it out of, the sli uh, out of its uh, cellophane wrapper, I mean, I was like, is that? I mean, is that, I didn't see any, you know, really sharp corners, like a box press. Yeah. Like you could see some of the corners and this was kind of a smooth box press. And right. I was like, wow, this is pretty interesting. And so I even was going to ask Joe on a, on a, on a text. He and I were going back and forth on it. And, um, I didn't, I just said, you know what, I'll just, I'll just wait and see, uh, where this goes. And sure enough, man, I mean, this, the cigar, I mean, uh, the burn on it was just perfect. I didn't have any runs and it's, and, and that to me, is indicative to what you know what we what we enjoy about having a a very good quality cigar and i, I put it up there with the premium i mean i i put that up, up against premiums all day long 
and yeah. uh, the notes the notes are just incredible. Um, uh, the pepper, oh, I love that white. I love that white pepper. I mean, yeah. and I'm not too much of a retro, you know, person anymore like I used to be back in my early days. And I did retro on this maybe four four times. I revisit on the retro man every time. It was just it was just 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 as enjoyable, and it and it, it didn't blow up my palate either. So yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very good, yeah, very a, good stogie. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a very flavorful cigar, and then, like you said, the that blast of pepper from when you first light it is, mm. is you know, it's, it's refreshing. And then, if, if pepper is too much for, if somebody doesn't like a lot of pepper in the cigar, the good thing about it is that that first blast tones down, mm -hmm. and it's it, it's not a tremendous amount of pepper after that. You still taste it, but it's not, you know, like a yeah. uh, the dominant dominant note that's in in the cigar. So yeah, that was my experience sure. when I when I first had it. Um, I was like, oh, okay, there's a blast of pepper. Yeah. The wrapper is lighter when you, if comparatively, when, when, you, when you look at some, some stronger cigars, right, um, yeah. there. And then, so I lit it, and I was like, okay, you know, I uh, bullet cut it. And, mm -hmm. and then after that first inch, the pepper did se settle, settle in nicely, right? Awesome yeah. stick, smoked it to the nub, burned even. And oh, yeah. I, uh, but my takeaway was on my lips there was like a like a, a a very distinct flavor that I was picking up and 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 again I've uh, Drew only sent sent me one so I am going to get more but you know I I can't wait to 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 smoke it again and the only reason why I've only had one is just because of the time limit from when we began this episode from the time we met met the stick met you and came. It just all came mm. together quicker than a normal mm. process. And uh, what do you get that? Like, do you get like a, it, 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 there's a flavor profile. I can't put my hands on it. It's not pepper, but it, it's tasty. It, 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 it kind of like it kind of like like if, if you're going through like tobacco in this university curriculum, you know, it tells you that, you know, you get savory or you get salty or you get sweet. Uh, mm -hmm. or or you get uh, pepper, or you get umami, like in, in, in like way like mm -hmm. like you're like wow, like like it, it, it lingers. Do you know what that is? That is like an it, it's it's so unique because there's very few cigars that have that sort of takeaway as my first impression whenever I try them. Um, I haven't necessarily gotten a lingering taste on my lips okay. um it could be i've heard spicy honey some people describe mm. it as that yeah it, um, it, it, it it's a like spice a, there yeah like a graham cracker type taste um what else have i heard um some people say they've gotten citrus notes out of there but i, I don't think yeah, that would be lingering. It, it may be like the, the spicy honey because it, it's like like a slight sweetness but it, it's a spice to it mm -hmm. so that, yep. That's what. That's the only thing I could think of that may possibly linger. But I, me personally, I have I haven't experienced that. Yep. The retro hail yeah. is is awesome. I retro hail, love it. Yeah. Completely love the stick. Uh, like I said, uh, going to uh, order some more for sure. Um, okay. You know, yeah, I appreciate and, that. and 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 do that there. So, what we spent some time on the war witch. Now that wasn't the first blend that you came right up with. That was the no. That was the third, correct? Right. El Milagro is, is the first. Okay. So that's the Mexican San Andreas and the Sun Grown Habano. Right. So the Mexican San Andreas is a um, Mexican San Andreas wrapper, Ecuadorian binder, and a Nicaraguan filler. And it's a um, double binder and triple cap. The Sun Grown Habano is, um, has an Ecuadorian binder as well, and a Dominican and Nicaraguan filler. And, and that one has a double binder and triple cap as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, those are, those are two great blends. Uh, uh, El Tiden did a, a fantastic job on it. As a matter of fact, the same rollers that rolled Herrera Steli Miami rolled uh, rolled those cigars. So mm. you know, um, so you know, if you have anybody that's a fan of the Herrera Steli Miami, I, I, I like that that particular blend. Uh, it comes out of El Titan the Browns as well. So if you, you know, go directly so. to your website, you can get a mm -hmm. sampler of the War the War Witch in the El Milagro. Milagro. Yep. 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 And El Milagro means the miracle. Yep. Because it, it took us so long to get the uh, the cigar, I, I felt like it was a miracle that we even <laughs> got the the company going. So that's why we named it El Milagro. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a forty five dollar sampler on the website uh, that has two Warwich, 
a sun grown Habano and then um, the uh, Mexican San Andreas. So you get a chance to taste everything that I currently have outside yep. of my infused stuff. And, um, yeah. you know, you can see what you like and what you don't. Yeah. You know, you may like all three. You may just like one of them. You know, it depends on your palate. Yep. You know? Yep. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you do now? Uh, so let me ask you this question. Uh, in your opinion, is the War Witch more of a a better hit for you, or do each of those cigars stand on their own? Because then my next question uh, is, since the War Witch is such a big hit, right, now you have to create something that lives up to that hype. See, that's the challenge. See, 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 that's the challenge. That's the challenge of a lot of the small batch cigar companies, right? When 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 they create something that is so loved, right? And believe me, it's loved. I've I've spoke to uh, Don mm-hmm. over at the Underground. Uh, these right. came highly recommended from Don from yeah. Drew over at the Underground Scout Shop over in Texas and whatnot. And um, you know, so it, it lives up to its hype for for them to say, hey, you know, you should try this, you try this, which is how we met you and whatnot. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, what do you do now? Like, that's gotta be a lot of pressure for you, right? Because you don't want something that that is kind of like, okay. It's one thing if you have, you know, uh, 30 SKUs and you come out with yeah. something that's okay. Yeah, it could be crop, you know. You can have that yeah. discussion and all that stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so so, what are your plans moving forward? Um, I'm currently working on a cigar. Um, I'm in between. I have samples coming from Agonor Salif and as well as uh, Noel Rojas. Ooh. So I'll be deciding between those two on uh which blend i'm gonna use so they're, they're two totally different blends that's a that's another yeah. episode too because that's a tough <laughs> that's a because i mean yeah drew, drew i mean i am a noel rojas fan i i yeah. uh, the complete no like like if uh and 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 I, I you can almost say i'm borderline fanboy now i'm not a fanboy of like any cigar company like that. I, I try to make sure okay. that I'm not right. And, mm. and, and, mm. you know, um, although some other podcast people are, but you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, Noel, man, this stuff you make is fr-. like, I text them. I'm like, this stuff is phenomenal. You know, yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so you've had test plans from, from Noel already. No, they're on their way. Okay. And then yeah. you, you're going to have some, so you're going to make a decision one or the other. Wow. Yeah, between yeah, it's gonna be between <laughs> Agonor Salif and uh, Noel Rojas. Yeah, yeah. So well, just uh, I can't well, give you all the details behind this, but uh, this particular stick is uh, for a, one, a customer of mine, a customer of mine that is a retired NBA uh, player. Mm. So he's a uh, yeah, he's a very good, uh, very good player, and he's a big fan of uh, my Mexican San Andreas as well as the War Witch. Actually, the War Witch is what put him over to ask if I would do you know do a stick with him. Um, so we're, uh, we're going to put this stick out now, you know, and, and when it get closer to releasing, I, c- I can tell you who it is, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. um, yeah, the, besides that stick for him, um, there is going to be a, uh, Maduro version of the war, which come into, so, uh, nice. yeah, so that should be, and I'm, I'm going to do that one all the way full body, full strength, yep. you know, uh, instead of it like graduating in strength, you know? We do it all a whole Maduro version of it, and that's that's going to be a a monster. Every, everybody that's heard about that one, they you know they're really excited because they they like the the current version of the War Witch, and they're like, man, a Maduro version of it would really be. Mm. Nice. So, well, oh, depending yeah. on, I mean, obviously, uh, Aganos is going to do that one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. so depending on where that stick's going to pivot, right? Because some Maduros mm. could go. Ultra smooth and tasty, even though it's a Maduro, right. uh, or they can get blasted with strength or full body. Right. You know. Right, right, right. And then I would yeah. imagine that, from your perspective, being the business owner, the size would make a difference as well. Yeah. Like which size you go with too. So you got some, damn man, you got some complex decisions coming up. <laughs> you you got you got you got you got you got, you got another new potential line with uh, your uh, existing vendor, right? You got another uh, another choice um, there, a good a good choice, and my great choice in my in my opinion. Yeah. And then you're gonna tap that off with the Warwitch Maduro, which has to live up to its hype of what the Warwitch was. You got some. Oh yeah, you're gonna have an interesting oh, yeah. six months. 
Yeah. I'm going to be a backer and well, saying to go ahead and do both. <laughs> let, <laughs> let, do let, both. Let, let them both, <laughs> let, 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 let them both duke it out, right? I mean, it'd be a right. great, it'd be a great yeah. competition. I mean, that that's a friggin', that's an awesome competition. Yeah. That, uh, you know, because it's, it's not like you have somebody and then you have, you know, uh, and again, it's not a testament to anybody. I'm not going to start naming names, but you have two proven track record names of people who make yeah. flavor flavor bombs you know what i mean yeah. they make yeah. whether they're strong in strength or not and and they've and i know uh Agados has worked collaboratively with 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 a bunch of different people obviously and whatnot yeah. and they've produced some pretty good stuff too yeah now with the war which I, I think your question was um was that more of a hit than my first two I, I would say yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's because of. Um, I don't think it's because of the tobacco. I think it's more so because of the price. Because okay. the price on on Warwitch is a lower price stick because I went directly to Nicaragua and got the tobacco. Mm. Uh, yeah. El Titan Nebraska is in guys. Miami, so you know yeah. I'm I'm dealing with a company that's here with me. You know, uh, so the price is if you're buying tobacco in in America, it's going to be higher. So that's why the, the price oh, yeah. of the stick for El Milagro is higher than the Warwick, uh, because it's coming in, out of Miami instead of me going directly to, uh, you know, Nicaragua or Honduras to, to get the tobacco. So that's why I would say Warwick has kind of taken off a little bit faster, not tremendously more, but it has taken off uh, faster. And it, it's strictly because of price point. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. uh, as a business owner that that that's a good observation. You you seem you seem well grounded in why you're positioned where, which I yeah. think is so important because there are a lot of companies that either ride the wave of history, uh, ride ride the wave of heritage, or ride the wave of who's the blender, right? Especially in right. the small batch world, and and mm -hmm. and now you produced. Uh, uh, products that are creating a demand, right? One mm -hmm. slightly higher up, and now and now you're starting to analyze. So now the challenge for you is to you you got to do your best outside of taxes and legislation and all of that stuff uh, to keep it in that price point. If that's your your main goal, you know, to to keep yeah. it going, you know, you can't come up yeah. with what well, uh, is it is it what two three dollars higher or what, what, uh, you talking about L, L Titan compared to Agonorsa? Yeah, is it two three or is it four five or? Um, well, L, I mean, uh, El Milagro was retailing for sixteen originally. Okay, and yeah. Then, um, yeah, and then uh, uh, Warwitch is at twelve dollars. So yeah, it's four four dollar mm -hmm. difference. Yep. But yeah. since COVID happened, um, and a lot of the shops weren't open. And I, I started just selling the El Milagro myself. I lowered the price on El Milagro to thirteen ninety nine. Mm -hmm. So I was able, I'm, I'm able to do that because I have more of a margin. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, now the new version of uh, El Milagro, it's the same blend, but it's going to be in a robusto size this time. Mm -hmm. um, and I changed the band because the I felt like the brand didn't have enough. Uh, it didn't. It, the band didn't have enough branding on it for the company. So um, the the band that's on El Milagro now is a, a black and red band. Um, that's to represent firefighters. And that's the Mexican San Andreas, and then the Sun Grown Habano has a blue and black band on it. Uh, and both of them have uh, four embossed stars on it. It's the stars of the Chicago flag. So I was trying to represent Chicago and then also represent first responders with with the with the two bands. Yeah. Um, but a lot, some people were complaining that, you know, they take pictures and they, they didn't know what cigar it was because it didn't have a name on it. So I listened to a lot of feedback and then <laughs> so I changed the uh, right. I changed the band. So it, it, you see Black Star Line cigars on there. Um, you also see the Chicago flag stars on there as well. The, the logo that's on that band is actually my secondary logo that I use on my Glenn Perrin glasses. Mm -hmm. um, isn't it isn't it amazing how no matter what you do you're gonna get a complaint and you're like really like you're worried about the band like yeah. you know I'm yeah. I'm the first person I look at the bands I I, I look at the artwork of the bands there but mm. I don't smoke with with a band on anything I don't know it's just a thing 
that's a that's a whole nother episode. Drew, put that down on an, as an episode. Yeah. Why? We'll have to interview yeah. some some Stogie Geek listeners <laughs> and find out like which one. Because like I always peel the labels off anyway, regardless of the cigar. But I take the time to look at your band and then do that. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah, it's good artwork. It's cool. And you know, some of them I get as I smoke more of them. I, I, if I get more entrenched into the bland, uh, the brand, I, I try to like you know diagnose like what 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 that's all about or i always ask yeah. usually on a second uh episode or 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 another interview when they come on like yeah hey, talk to us about the marketing behind it so so that's kind of yeah. cool that 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 you touched upon it because you know you have something inside your head that you want it to represent right you want it to represent yeah. the, your your where, where you're from you want it to represent the firefighters right you're mm-hmm. you're currently a firefighter active duty firefighter yeah yep so you know yep. It, it it's it's part of who you are and, and it's a great way to 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 tie the consumer into your story it's a great way to build brand loyalty that's for sure yeah well I, I, you know my cigar if they don't like the band at least they know that i, I put the majority of the money into the tobacco which is what's <laughs> most important it. anyway which, well, you're not smoking <laughs> so, the band yeah, yeah, did, uh, you know because i mean i <laughs> i don't want to name any brands but i mean i'm smoke brands that had fantastic bands and the cigar was trash yeah so <laughs> you know i don't smoke bands i smoke the tobacco so I, i'd rather you put more than money in the tobacco than you know having some extravagant band that i'm just going to take off and throw off throw away anyway mm. to my knowledge you can only smoke through two brand two bands uh mm-hmm. leaf by oscar those are smokable. Yeah. I actually learned that in my old Cigar Club radio days, how they were actually, mm-hmm. and, and, and actually how the, those bands are produced is super cool, mm-hmm. too. It's, 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 it's produced for a group in that country with women. It's only, exclu- it's only produced by women who um, like are in a situation where they're single parents, right? So it gives them a job mm-hmm. and employment and all of that type stuff. And so it's like super cool story. But you can smoke through that. I never knew you could smoke through that until I had the interview. I actually tried okay. it. It doesn't change. And then, like, the CAO quarter. Yeah, you know, the, the Ropa yeah. thing? Other than that, yeah, Drew, yeah, off the Amazon. top. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, like that. Amazon line. By the way, you yeah. want to smoke through that one. Don't be like me and try to take that one off. You will ruin a cigar. <laughs> you, you will completely ruin a cigar, uh, for sure. Yeah, that'll tear the wrapper off. Yeah. Tear it right off, you yeah. know? But, yeah, the, and, and there are some that we review in our sticks of the week section that I'm like saying, you know, man, they use too much rapping and stuff like that. So yeah, mm-hmm. but, but, but the band and the shelf talkers, um, those are all important aspects of, um, consumer sales i mean it is what mm-hmm. it is i mean you know if you don't believe me mm-hmm. all you got to do is go to any grocery store in the glory days when when we didn't have to wear masks right and the mm-hmm. end caps i mean you know you have coke yeah. fighting with pepsi lays fighting oh, yeah. with the the uh, tostitos for those end caps and 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 it gets so it gets so important for that that the company themselves are responsible in the grocery stores for the end caps to make the presentation mm-hmm. the right way. And I'm sure it's the same in liquor stores and all of that stuff, too, uh, there, too. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's all part of the whole customer experience, you know? Yeah, definitely. I wanted to pivot, definitely. I wanted to, I wanted to pivot the conversation to the, the, the slow burn. I was really surprised about the slow burn on the War Witch. Uh, yeah. Now, I mean, because that, that cigar took me an hour and 50 minutes. I looked at it and go, oh, I'll get this dinner an hour and 10 tops <laughs> and you know and it just happened to be on the day that they would do the uh, cigar what's that called a cigar world competition where you can't put down the cigar and you have to kind of keep it in your hands and so okay. it happened to be on that day that i smoked that this was just last week what is that like uh, the ice bucket challenge or something like that cigar smoking no, what a, the hell are you talking about yeah it's a I've never heard of it before supposed, yeah you're supposed to take uh a, a, you know your cigar and uh and and what it is no can't put it down you can't relight it and so on this cigar what i saw i'm like oh i'll get through this and i i, I did i said an hour and 10 minutes in my in my mind and mm-hmm. here i am at two hours and i mean at one hour and 53 minutes is what it, it took me to smoke the war witch and i was surprised i mean and it didn't go out i didn't do any touch-ups i didn't do any relights and it i mean just nice slow burn and not only not only myself, I put this out just to, to some of our Soy Geeks uh, viewers, 
and and uh, I think one of them had tried your cigar, and they were like, "Yeah, I was really surprised that it just took that much time, but it was an enjoyable burn for sure, an enjoyable stick." So, but yeah. uh, so are are the other two sticks similar in burning, or uh, or is it just something with this the yeah. typical with this specific cigar that you were aiming for, or they were aiming for? No, the um, Warwich has a double binder and a triple cap too. So all three of them okay. are, are constructed similar. So they they're gonna have okay. a similar burn. Um, the uh, El Milagro they're Toro, so you know it's gonna it's gonna be a nice mm -hmm. slow burn. You know, and you sit and enjoy those those sticks for a while. You know. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be a similar experience with all three of them. It, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. Mm. Construction all three. Yeah, of them it, yeah. Yeah, after I smoked it, I, I did tell I did go back on my social media. I said, Yeah, this is a this is definitely one you want to take your time on. Uh enjoy all the all the, the citrus, the cedar, the coffee, uh the nuttiness that comes through definitely the, the pepper spice at the at the beginning and then throughout the cigar itself. And then of course, you know, go through some retro hills uh to really get that full aroma enjoyment out of that cigar. Uh oh, but yeah. yeah, that that yeah, I, I really I, I really like that. I mean it gave me an extra 40, 42 minutes of, of pleasure, uh, you know, smoking that stogie. And it just it really set the tone, you know, for the rest of the day for me. And yeah. it was just, you know, and I, and I told a lot, I, I told a lot. Rush, just, just let it do its, do it, you know, go through its course and enjoy it for sure. Yeah. Mm. So not to hop back on the, the 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 ro the the boxing match between Aganosa and Noel Rojas, <laughs> but but I, I can't get because I'm just like really like like you know and, and and to make it even more relevant in my mind, Stogie Geeks episode two uh three twenty nine the one before yours we interviewed Noel. So it's like, oh, okay. it's, so it was like, it was like, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like crazy, right? So I'm like, um, yeah, I'm trying to think other than it, the answer, I'm, I'm out and I ask a question and the answer is going to be, well, I'm, I, it, it's going to be what I choose and what I like it. But what do you, what are the nuances that you're searching for, for this new blend? Like, what do you want the consumer to, to, to experience? Like what, what's your end goal in that regard? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's typical like any cigar. I want it to be an, an experience for, for my customers, anybody that tries my cigars. Uh, like when, when Don from um, uh, Underground first smoked El Milagro, the Mexican San Andreas, he immediately said it was like a flavor roller coaster. Mm. Like it just went from flavor to flavor to flavor all the way through, a nice slow burn. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then it was a decent strength to the cigar. So, you know, I just I, I always loved for people to give me feedback on my cigars, whether it's good, bad or ugly. You know, you can tell me it doesn't hurt me one way or the other, you know, because I can't please everybody. But my uh, my end game is, is to put out great cigars that people are going to enjoy and want to revisit uh, very often. And, um, you know, they enjoy some good company or good conversation while enjoying the product that I put out. Mm. What's the yeah. timeline once you make a decision as far as when uh, whoever you decide to go with, they're going to be available to the market? Um, see, when, if, if I go with Noel, it's unknown because I've never worked with him before. So I don't know gotcha. like, what yep. size factory he's rolling with or how many rollers. See, like with El Titan and Browns, I know because they have like eight rollers. So I know it'll be eight rollers and then you got Willie Herrera coming out of there. You got La Polina coming out of there. You got Warp coming out of there. So, you know, and then they, they got me, yeah. they're trying to throw me in there as well. So, you know, with Aganorsa, I know there's a bigger factory and I know they can, they can pump the sticks out. Mm -hmm. So it, it just, it just depends on who I go with and how fast I can come to a decision. Because once I get the samples, I still, I got to send them up to the, uh, to the NBA player so he could smoke them as well because I want him to know what this cigar is going to be. I don't want to just put something out. You know, I want him to thoroughly enjoy it before we decide on it. So mm. um, I'll probably have more of a, the decision-making factor on it because I, I, I smoke 
more than he does and i smoke more of a variety of stuff than he does mm -hmm. so my palate probably is a little more developed where i can pick up on stuff and pick up on you know if one blends better than the other so mm -hmm. um but i would like to if we're almost in june if i could have it out by like early fall i, I would like to but mm -hmm. you know like i said it depends on you know how we like the stuff or if we have to go back and change things and um the whole COVID stuff, if that's holding stuff up coming into the country, and you know, it's right. a bunch of factors that's right. going on. Right. Yeah, I was just looking for a general timeline. I just, I just think that it's so interesting, right? Uh, that that it, you're engaged. So your taste panel is mm. between you and this uh, NBA player. Do you have, uh, do you have a group of friends that you mm. trust and and as far as yeah. feedback and all that type stuff? Yeah, yeah. Man. Are you looking for taste testers? We're about to throw everybody's been asking about that. Yeah. The problem, the problem is, I think my vote will be slightly skewed. No question, right? right? But anyway, right, right. <laughs> that's all. No, because uh, we did interview someone who um, mm. was involved with a baseball player who created a stick. And the baseball player had more of the – when we interviewed him, I did not know this going into the interview, but I was asking mm. him questions about the stick. And I was saying, you know, like the ring gauge is just its just too big, I think, for consumers to enjoy the stick. Have you considered knocking down and doing it with different sizes? And he says, no, the, the ball player wanted this size, this stick, this – you know, they had their – the regiment and I was like, but you're yeah. the creator and you know a little bit more about cigars. So yeah. so you know, yeah. just some friendly advice that, you know, you you you, you keep your NBA player at bay and, and yeah. <laughs> tell them, yeah. you know, hey, you know <laughs> mm -hmm. this yeah. is this how it should well, he go. wants he <laughs> wants the um he wants the first stick to be a six by sixty. See um, why? I, yeah, I personally don't smoke six by sixties, but yeah. Um, that's like the largest I'll go as far as a ring gauge. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll, we'll come out with a smaller size to go along with that six by 60. So I can, you know, yeah. I can catch the people that don't want to smoke. Cause I know a whole bunch of people that just don't like six, six by sixties. And I, I'm typically one of them. Yep. If somebody gave me a six by 60, yeah, I'd smoke it, but I, I, I don't typically buy them. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, so. I'm in the same boat. And, and, and there's a lot of reasons, um, if you go that route with the 60 ring gauge as a debut, it's mm. going to be very hard for the roller, regardless of company, doesn't matter, I'm making a, a broad statement, to mm. hold on to that flavor of yeah. whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Because mm. as we know, as we know here on Story Geeks, and as the Story Geeks listeners know, the majority of the flavors coming from the wrapper and so right. the smaller the wind gauge the more you can experiment with uh the complexity of the flavor that you're getting out of it than if you were to go yeah. to a straight six by 60 you know yeah for sure well my favorite my favorite vitola is a lancetto yep so that's you know if i'm sitting around and i'm smoking something a lot of times i'm smoking the lancettos because like you said the smaller ring gauge mm -hmm. gets all the flavor in it so i think that's why i kind of I've only been smoking close to seven years. I haven't been smoking that long. Mm -hmm. So, um, but my palate developed really fast because I smoked a lot of different brands um, from the, the big guys. And I've kind of uh, gone all the way boutique, just, you know, pretty much all boutique stuff. I don't really smoke the big guys stuff anymore. But, um, yeah. you know, and I, I, I normally smoke three cigars a day. I, I would be smoking now with you now, but I, I didn't tell you this, but I, I just had surgery on my hip two days ago. Oh, really? So, yeah. So I had a I had a torn labrum in my hip, so they had to go in and repair it for me. Uh, so that's why I'm not smoking now is because I, I can't make it out to my man cave to uh, <laughs> sit out there and enjoy a cigar. So, 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 what, <laughs> so, so what do you mm – -hmm. so not only are you in quarantine, so to speak, right, now that they mm – -hmm. not, not, now you're confined to a couch <laughs> – <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, uh, I was using a passive motion, uh, machine on my leg before I got on the call with you all. So mm. you know, cause they, I got to keep moving the the hip so it won't stiffen up. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, so um, I, I, but yeah, a, cause I'd be smoking right now. 
if I were if uh if I hadn't uh and I I'm a scotch lover and I'm, I'm taking medicine I can't even drink scotch so I'm just over here oh. sober as can be. <laughs> well, I'm drinking coffee. Normally, I drink on Stogie Geeks, but I, I didn't, I'm not drinking today. I, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for later, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've, already, yeah, yeah. I've already started because it's 5 o'clock here in Texas. I'm just kidding, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere. No, but no I'm not. Gotta, I'm more so a Scotch gotta, guy, but I, I've been dabbling with bourbon, and the bourbon that I found that I like with um, with the war, which is uh, Four Rows of Single Barrel. mm that's uh, oh, that oh, one's yeah. very good with that one. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're a, oh, yeah. a bourbon aficionado, you may be able to find something better than uh, the Four Roses. Because I talked to a guy that doesn't that drinks a lot of bourbon. He doesn't like Four Roses, but he was drinking uh, Old Granddad uh, One Fourteen. Yeah. One Fourteen. He said yeah, that oh, yeah. was good. Yeah, and I've never had it that. Is. So I'm, I'm gonna try it and see if it's a better pairing uh, with the yeah. Warwick. So I like the yeah, four no, roses. I think either either way, either of the two, you can definitely go. Four roses definitely for sure. But yeah, that old granddad 114 will definitely uh go with the strength. It'll pair well with the strength of this cigar. Uh I got yeah. a quick question though, because you said mm. Lancero. So, mm. and again, I'm not trying to dig too much into this. Dig. Uh dig. So with, with, with <laughs> Noel, because you know Noel is a king of small gauges. Is that oh, yeah. something you're is that something you're playing with with Noel? I mean just I don't want to call um, it a collaboration, but is it yeah. something you're you're thinking about? Well, the the type the sizes that sell the most are uh, Toro Robusto and uh, Corona, yeah, mm-hmm. and then six by sixty. The Lancero is really yeah. the nationwide. They really don't sell that well. Um, yeah. If I did a Lancero, and like I said, and I love Lancero. If I did a Lancero, it, it'll probably be something me and Don talk about, and I do a, a special for his shop. Or if it was another mm-hmm. shop that reached out to me and said they wanted that that blend in the in the in the Lancetto size, I would do it as a as a special for whatever shop was asking for it. I probably wouldn't release it like nationwide though. Mm-hmm. That's I think okay. I'm, I think I'm too I small you. for that. I, I, honestly, even even if you were bigger, I, I think you are spot on with through any generations of story geeks. Whether you have the first generation. Uh, then the second generation when you and then, and then uh, I was in the third and now Jews here in the mm-hmm. fourth. That topic comes up all the time. Like like for s- true stogie mm-hmm. geeks who are looking for cigar mm-hmm. flavor, strong mm-hmm. or or even medium or mild, right? Mm-hmm. The, how Lanceros just don't sell. Like that yeah. that yeah. that's you know they they don't they don't. And I think you making them a five pack. For a collaboration, for a shop exclusive, it's a smart move, mm-hmm. right? Because because yeah. basic economics will tell you that it'll build a demand for that. Mm-hmm. They'll seek after that for 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 that product from that particular shop, and then get it, and then you, yeah. you'll be able to move forward from from there. That's just you're a smart guy, Eric. <laughs> yeah, yes, a, yes. a little something grew, grew in my brain over yeah. the in my no, over the years. No, you're a smart guy. You know, you know where you want to be positioned. You know what's gonna, what's, what, what, what should do well. What's there? You've come up with with uh, um, good, uh, quick, quicker success, right? From when you started your venture and 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 quicker success, and now you have a product that is sought out, being the war witch, and then the other product that's that's catching up, right? A lot of that is spillover mm-hmm. effect. That's a, you you know yeah. you 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 seem very grounded in where the the company is, and 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 you kind of see it for what it is. As a and believe me, we we interview all sorts of characters here on Stogie Geeks. Some of them, <laughs> some of some of them, some of them, you know, they 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 we we don't even get to this type of discussion to interview Mm -hmm. late two or three you know as far as Mm -hmm. the the Mm -hmm. in-depth discussion as to like what's going to work because ultimately you can come up with something that you like all day for taste but if it doesn't sell on the shelf so there's no demand for the product right your your company is 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 just going to be a a a cigar company there and and it's all about you know all about the yeah. consumers and what they like, and I know yeah. most of the. Believe me, when we sp- sometimes we have the opportunity to actually speak to a roller on this show, so an actual no roller, and and the conversations we have are like like why I roll these sixty ring gauges because that's what they want me to roll. Whatever they want me to roll, I'll roll right. <laughs> and, right but right. but like you know, I the roller always goes back to the smaller ring gauge as well. That should tell you something. 
Yeah. You know, and oh, I don't yeah. I don't know why I consume I've smoked Lanceros on the golf course. If it's not a windy day, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or yeah. F- yeah, if, if I fished windy, or fine. something. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. They're very hard to keep in in your in 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 your humidor if you jam them in with other with other <laughs> things as well. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Guilty of that, you know, guilty. Especially I bought a five pack of the um the uh Mike know. Mike Bellady's yeah. uh, Glor- uh, Glorious Bastards. Yeah, or no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's from something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm actually smoking my last one right now that I got from Underground, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like, wow, I'm like freaking, you know, they're freaking tasty. You know what I mean? And and I like them, yeah. but thank God they come with that cardboard backing because I just stuff them, <laughs> in, I stuff them in my backpack with all my other stuff, and and oh, and by the way, Drew, uh, yeah. and for you Stogie geeks. Uh, at, at home, if you have one of these little foldy things, don't stick lanceros yeah. in with other sticks. It'll it, no. it, it it'll mold to the to the thing. It doesn't break them, but I was like, oh, I'm not gonna hand it out, and that one's crooked. You know, the ones on the <laughs> outside edges. You know, just 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 a little tip for you guys there. Cool. Yeah. So um, you you got some big projects coming up and some big decisions to make in the next three months. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited. It's, I think it's good for the company, and um, you know, it'll, it'll really get us out there um, to the masses uh, once we partner with this NBA uh, player. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's going to do a lot for the company where I can I can put out uh, more sizes of, of what I currently have, mm-hmm. and then you know bring bring more projects out that people are like. You know? so, That's awesome. You know. What are you yeah. doing for promotional stuff there as a company? Like what? What are you? Uh, what, what are you looking for? Because you know, a, a lot of you know, you you have a lot of choices in the market, right? You can go catalog, not catalog online order, like um, print. Uh, you can go online, social media. What do you? What are you kind of building? A, how are you kind of building that brand that way? Uh, social media has been the main thing we use in uh, Facebook and more so Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, We've been getting a lot of exposure, and, and that's how I come across a lot of podcasts and things. Because uh, I, I, I think this is maybe the seventh podcast I've done. Mm-hmm. So I've been using podcasts yeah. as well to get out. Um, word of mouth, of course. Um, yeah. And then we're, like I said, we're carried on Cigar Federation. So that when they, they blast out in, uh, emails to I don't know how many people. And um, they have, uh, uh, you know, our sticks in the email. Yep. So, yep. Um, you know, so that helps. So every, every little bit helps. I think more of it is going towards social media because I have a lot of control over that. And I don't really uh, have to pay anybody to do that. I handle the social media myself. So mm. if I can take great pictures of the cigars and, and get other people to take pictures of cigars and, you know, and then put them up, that draws a lot of attention to the page and draws a lot of attention to the brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So do you have any yeah, s- sales reps on the road business wise or anything like that? Or are you just, you're putting it in your different channels and going forth from there or what's your next step no, in that I, regards? I don't, yeah, I, I need to start utilizing uh, sales reps because um, mm-hmm. that, uh, that'll help us grow mm-hmm. uh, even faster. Yep. Um, I've had a couple of people reach out to me and I'm uh, and currently negotiating with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be reps for us, um, but most of what what have we been doing lately? Well, since we've been around, because uh, we we got the cigars last August, uh, it's basically been me calling people and uh, reaching out to people and sending out samples, and me and me and some of my uh, my guys that work with me, we go to different lounges and we're talking and getting getting the cigars in, in different lounges. So mm-hmm. you know that's that's what we've been doing so far, but. In order for us to grow bigger than that, we we're gonna need some sales reps because it, it's just places I won't be able to get to because I just don't have enough time for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, what are you looking for? Um, like, so you you obviously want to take the company in 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 that direction and start that process. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah especially yeah, definitely. after you make your last line because you'll have four lines then. You know, yeah. four four lines mm-hmm. or you yeah, with 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 some different sizes uh there as well but i think a lot of it regardless of sales reps and regardless of size of company it's brick and mortar shop owner Mm buy-in i think that Mm -hmm. that that they like your stick and it doesn't mean that they have to just like your stick they like your stick they're going to recommend your stick and that goes along that's why i talked to when drew and i talked to the story geeks here 
uh, mm. who who listen to the show, we we say you know, for I, I'm amazed at the emails that I get of people who smoke cigars for years and they haven't even walked mm. into a brick and mortar. I'm like, wow. uh, how are you get? <laughs> how are you getting like your? You know, and, and then you start getting into brands and what they smoke, and they like some small mm. batch, but they're like, I consider you like small batch, your small batch mm-hmm. boutique, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And 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 you know, it, it's there's such a culture that's involved with with that as opposed to some of the big guys and and you know yeah. well, as as hosts of Story Geeks Drew and I can pivot and have the conversations you know we we've spoken to people you know or gigantic companies and we've spoken to small batch guys and mm. and you know the processes as far as getting the word out there and doing that is almost the same right they use social media some of them use some of the uh, uh print or mm-hmm. or or some of the online forums some of them sponsor different various podcasts and all of that stuff there too to to get that brand recognition out but it's mm-hmm. like at the end of the day even if you have a sales rep like i have been uh i used to own a cigar shop so i know what it's like and then okay. i've worked in a cigar shop uh recently up until 2016 right Mm -hmm. uh there and even if you have sales rep it's the shop owner buy-in i think is so key yeah you know the brick and mortar uh guy or gal who owns that has to say to their patrons like hey but but more importantly as a business they need to know what their customers palettes are like right because if there's a guy or gal who comes in and only likes barely mediums and you're and you're throwing a war witch in their hands. Eh, they might not, it might, it might, it might yeah, not it's like it. It's gonna be a shock. You know, it's gonna be a shock. Yeah. But 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 they're the ones that I think really um, are in mm-hmm. the background, re- really pushing that there too. Yeah. So the good news is you already have the touch base with with those types of people because that's your methodology mm-hmm. first, as opposed to some of the bigger companies dump a sales rep and a, cat- a picture of a catalog and say, this is what we're coming out with at the trade show, and this is how much it costs, and we think you'd like them. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, here's a sample. And if they like them or they, they trust their locals or whichever, but the, but that process is never going to change, I don't think. Sure. You, know? Right. you know, I think you yeah. getting out there uh, – and having the success that you've had so far and you know not to ponder on your big decision in 90 days as to who you're gonna go but those are good problems to have it's growth yeah you know oh, yeah it's growth yeah yeah i definitely appreciate it you know like you said it's a, it's a very good problem to have yeah because uh, some companies don't have that problem so. right 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 <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome drew you have any more questions no, I was just going to, well, yeah. I was, <laughs> uh, do you have anybody in California right now, any retailers out there? Because I got a couple of buddies I've already turned turned you on to. So, uh, um, we'll be, I've been chasing be small some calls. For, for a couple of months now. So I'm just waiting for okay. Drew to, he hasn't smoked the wool, which he's had it in his hand uh, since like April or something. So I'm just, okay. I'm, I've j- actually just reached out to him to see if he smoked it. Uh, and I, I don't think he has. He hasn't responded yet. So. No, we don't. We don't have any retailers in California right now. No, that's fine. You'll, you'll be getting some calls here pretty soon, I believe. Okay. I got some. Uh, yeah, I appreciate I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm a native Californian, so I've, I'm from San Diego originally. Okay. Texan since I've been in Texan for about eight years now, or seven years, and uh, yeah, so I, I definitely talked to some buddies out there and uh, uh, turned them on to you, and uh, you know, but that to me is what uh, the the product will speak for itself. I mean, I you know, as I told my couple of my friends that have cigar uh, uh, brick and mortars out there. Uh, mm. It'll speak for itself. And, and uh, I know with my, myself, I put you up there with guys like Roma Craft. I put you up mm. there with guys, you know, uh, that uh, Strong Lajeros, you know, cigars. Mm. And, I mean, for this for this particular blend, uh, the other two blends, I told them, I said, from what I've what I what I can find and what I've what I've been told by some of our uh, followers is that, you know, that the, these two blends are 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 definitely well worth well a visit, and they'll mm-hmm. become a regular in a lot of their humidors. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, so that was yeah that was my question is if you had anybody out in California yet? <clears throat> yeah, nope, not yet. Okay, uh, it'll get there. <laughs> so yeah, I appreciate that, bro. I do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the product, and then I think you you with when when 
you know, you you come to a decision and you got your NBA player going, that's going to build up a lot of hype there too and a little bit more validity. Yeah. Then they're going to ask you the the great question is, is you know, post-COVID and all that stuff, when can we do an event, right? <laughs> right. So I yeah. hope your buddy likes to travel. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, yeah. I hope your yeah, buddy likes to travel yeah. because then you guys will be, uh, you guys will be doing a, a, a tour for sure at some of the local oh, yeah. shop fest and all of that stuff. I wanted know, to yeah. touch a little bit. Right. I wanted to touch on his, on his thoughts about the, uh, like his vanilla bourbon, his coffee infused and his uh, rum infused uh, cigars mm. as well, because I say you have those there. Uh, I am, uh, uh, I got some friends that do love the infused cigars. Uh, no, no. Primarily, so are that was that is that something that you have on a consistent basis? Uh, is that uh, in a, it says a house blend? Is that uh, yeah, I guess, I guess yeah, I inf- that. yeah, they're a house blend, and I infuse them. I infuse them here at the house. Uh, okay. I, really, I I just did them for fun because I had people that would come to my events that didn't really want to smoke my my main line. They felt yeah. like all three. Well, at the time, it was just two. They felt like the two were too strong for them because they were uh, new smokers. Sure. So I, I said I wanted any and everybody that comes to an event that I put on to be able to enjoy themselves. So I start. I, I infused three cigars. Um, nice. And, uh, you know, like you said, it's a coffee one, it's a rum one, and a bourbon one. Me personally, yeah. I can't stand them. Uh, I don't <laughs> like infused cigars. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like infused cigars. Uh, even though they're mine, I don't like them. Uh, but yeah. they're not for me. Yeah, they're, they're not right. for me. I only only smoked them so I could talk about them. Um, yeah, you know, if somebody wanted to know about you know the cigar, I could tell you about it. But it's it's just it's nothing I would buy. Um, how do you? But yeah. how do you infuse them at yeah. home? Is that like a? Is that a, that mu- that must be a separate process as well? Like how big is that process? Yeah, I'm, I'm old school with it. I put them all in Tupperdoors and I, I sit the liquor in there and I let them sit for months and just let it soak, soak, you know, soak up the uh, the liquor and whatever else I sit in there. I don't, I don't yeah. inject stuff and like some companies inject it and the cigars all wet and all that stuff. The yeah. whatever substance is in the Tupperware with the cigars never touches the cigar. It's just time. It just sits in yeah. there and it and it just soaks it up. Mm-hmm. Like I've, yeah. I've I've been infusing some of them since November. They've just been sitting in there and just infusing the whole time. So they nice. should be really flavorful. Now I'm I'm not going to test it out, but some you know somebody people buy them all the time <laughs> from y'all. Yeah, offline. No, they and, do. Um, you know, <clears throat> yeah, my website man, and they they love them. You know, so I'm I'm like I said, I I just like to produce stuff that people like. You know. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, I, I, when I started smoking, I. Uh, I had a black pearl. I can't remember who makes that, but um, I was in the firehouse. I smoked that. And that was my first cigar, and it made me run right to the toilet. Like it just upset my stomach really bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, like I, like literally, like I barely made it in there. You know, so I don't know uh-huh. what. I don't know if it's just I wasn't used to nicotine or tobacco or what. But so then after that, I had a black cherry from a local lounge around here, and I liked it. It was it was real tasty to me. So yeah. after that, I went to a dirty rat. Mm. And once oh, I yeah. smoked the dirty rat, I was like, "Wow!" And then I started smoking more fuller body natural cigars. So it might have been like a month later. So I decided to go back and get a black cherry because you know I liked them. So I was like, "You know, I get one of those and enjoy it." So I think I bought the real four of them. Yeah. I lit that bad boy up, and it tasted like shit. So <laughs> and, and then I was just like, "Wow!" Like my palate had changed within that three, four weeks mm-hmm. of, uh, oh, yeah. of adding in, you know, smoking dirty rats and legals and stuff like that. Mm. And it just turned, changed my palate to where I couldn't tolerate the, uh, infused stuff anymore. Yeah. And that yeah. I, I, I haven't smoked an infused stick since. So, yeah, we all have those, we all have those friends that just, they, 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 they go off a of base of the aroma of the cigar. And so I tell them, I said, look, if you haven't right. smoked a cigar, start with some of these, you know, flavored ones like the java sticks or the nubs or even yeah. some of the acid acid lines from uh, drew estate and then now i got you to put on my on my list and uh yeah just mm-hmm. just like i thought i said just 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 practice mm-hmm. you know practice 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 i i uh ai style and then uh <laughs> and then from there well, that, you know graduate i take that back i um 
Willie Herrera was on his Instagram. He when the when the twentieth anniversary acid came out, he mm-hmm. was smoking one on his Instagram. So I was just like, well, I was like, Willie smoke. I've never had an acid before, so I was like, yeah, uh, Willie smoking it. I was like, I you know I'll smoke it, you know. So I was out yeah. of the lounge and I I saw it. So I was like, oh, hey, looks like we're gonna try it today. <laughs> so I lit it up, man. <laughs> It it was worse than I expected, so yeah. uh, you know I I couldn't I couldn't take it the like the the potpourri smell that was coming from it, and uh, I was just like, man, I, I just don't see what people like in in the things, but you know, yeah. Jewel State knows what they're doing. They sell a, a shit ton of them, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's a it's a culture. I mean, you know, it's 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 uh, I I I'm not a hundred percent sold on any of the infused stuff like they're not certainly not my go-to's but i've had said here many times on the story geek show when it comes to infused stuff it's like when i've had like a five cigar day we're talking like total guy right got out mm-hmm. had a coffee golfed 18 went to a cigar shop had another cigar and then oh by the way it's summertime we got invited yeah. to a fire pit, and that, and it becomes a point for the day. I'm like cigared out, right? You know, after like mm. five sticks, and then I start drinking, and I know I'm not driving. I'm like, yeah, give me one of those Cuba Cubans. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to light this thing up, you know? And, and then, right? I, and you know, it, it's funny because <laughs> there have been times <laughs> in my single days when I'd be in a cigar shop. And I'm mm. smoking a Cuba Cuba, and a random would walk in, and they're like, "You're smoking a Cuba? You're drunk." <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, "Yep, I'm mm-hmm. drunk. I'm not driving, but I'm drunk." <laughs> and it's not that it just it just you know, like I said, they're, they're just not my my go tos, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I think they're gross. But like I said, he's they, JD and them sell a whole bunch of them, so somebody likes them. That so I'm, I'm that they do. Them. They come in. They come in in in, in droves and and clans yeah. and groups and. And buy them. I know yeah. that from from working oh, yeah. working in a cigar shop. They're all on the rice oh, yeah. rockets in the summer. The hat backwards <laughs> and and well, well, I live in the northeast, so there's a lot of Italian guys up here, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, so it's it's they they just they they love them, you know, and yeah, they gravitate. Oh yeah. But some of the other stuff, like the, the like you said, like some of the ligas and the rats and and you know, dirty rat, filthy rat, mm-hmm. all of the, those are some mm-hmm. pretty cool the fly, feral pigs. Those are some pretty cool sought yeah. after sticks here in the northeast for sure you know and yeah, I, the ligas early on was some of my favorites especially the t52 uh yeah, velvet yeah. rat was uh, yep. uh, uh one of my early on favorites mm-hmm. um that's just when i went even like really boutique i you know i still i still go back and smoke them from time to time it's just i kind of stay in the boutique realm so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I remember when when T fifty two came out. I was on a T fifty two kick for a while. You know, yeah. when they first came out, I was like, "He's a freaking good stick." It was a good stick, you know. And then you know, as you and and this and this happens over years, right? Of smoking, it's not my palate's change. I'm like, they did something to this blend. This is not like how it used to taste. You know what I mean? You know, and 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 you know, sometimes when we have repeats like Drew come on, I'm like, oh, what did you do to those little league is not even living up to their their, their hype anymore <laughs> for me. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know. That's just uh, that's just the way I go. Oh, your palate's getting no. My palate. They, they, what'd you do? You changed it. You know. Yeah, yeah. I heard when <laughs> soccer was involved with the ligas that it, the blend seemed to be different. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, yes. I never smoked that that version of the ligas. I wouldn't know, mm-hmm. but people I know that have had the you know, like you said, when, when Liga first came out, and compared to what is what it is now, they they say it is different. But like I said, I wouldn't know the difference. Yep. It's yeah. different, I, and and not for nothing. It's not to pick on Drew. I I remember I was at a Rocky Patel event. And I was mm. talking to the rep, and I'm like, what'd you guys do to the decades? They're like, nothing. Mm. We did not touch that. Mm. We did not. I'm mm. like, yeah, the, something's different. Oh, it's the crop this shit. No, it's not the crop this shit. Something is different from the Rocky Patel decades. I says, I could tell, mm-hmm. tell you that from a shop perspective, um, the Rocky Patel decade was the second mm. stick to come out that shops were only selling two at a time because they were in that demand. 
Like you wouldn't get a box mm. decades, you know. And when mm, you yeah. smoke them, you're like, damn, they're good. And I still go back. I I go next door to Havana Cigar Club every once in a while, mm-hmm. and I and I grab a decade, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, it's not what it used to be. You know what I mean? But it's good. But it's not. It's not mm. what it used to be. And it's not that my palate's changed. It's something's happened. You can't tell me. <laughs> and and believe me, I've argued with the local rep up here in the Northeast. His name's Max. We've gone back and forth, and he's just like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to cigars. I'm like, okay. Oh, that's cool. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm done smoking your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, definitely yeah. that definitely that 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 cigar when Saka was there. I mean, and we'll and we'll be talking to him shortly. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, Actually he's uh, the, scheduled yeah. for next week, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's scheduled next, for next yeah, week. June, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll have Steve Saka on next week, but yeah, we can. It's like I tell, I can tell everybody that that that's just a, to me that's a Saka effect um, because mm. I used to smoke Saka, and, man. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him. Yep. What the hell oh, happened yeah. to Liga yeah. since you left? <laughs> 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 you know, you know, <laughs> you know uh, but but they sell and then they do their thing. So you know, what do you do. smoke yeah. uh, when you're not smoking your stuff? If you want to give a shout out to Daniel, or you know, I only smoke my stuff. <laughs> What do you like? No, I, I would be lying if I said that I only smoke my stuff. Uh, I, I do smoke a lot of Aganorsa. That Supreme Leaf is one of the recent ones with Aganorsa that I really like. Uh, yeah. Tatawahe, I, I mean, I love the Monster line. Uh, I think Pete. I can smoke every one of those. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Pete, <laughs> yeah Pete, uh, Pete's a good guy. He, um, he actually yeah. gave me advice about the cigar companies before, uh, you know, before we got started. So, you know, uh, I like I like Pete's stuff a lot. Um, mm, yeah. I'm a big I'm a big fan of Roma Craft. Oh yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Skip, Skip and Mike oh, gave yeah. me advice before the company started as well. Uh, you know, so I I I really like uh, their stuff. Um, who else? We already talked about Noel Rojas. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I smoke some Cuban stuff. Not not a whole lot of it. Uh, Epicure number two, I think it is. Hoy Oyo de Madre mm-hmm. is a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the house blends that come out of uh, El Tide and the Bronze. Uh, the My Way. Um, I forget the name of the other two that they have, but they're, they're pretty good blends too. They You get a bottle directly from El Tide and the Bronze. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I smoke a lot of different stuff. Um, uh, Huevo de Oro, I think it's by Chameleon, I think. That's, okay. a, that's a good one. Um, yeah. I'm drawing a blank on some other ones. It's I all to, good. I have to see the sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tatuaje, man, I usually can't go through a Stogie Geeks episode without mentioning the word. You know how Sesame Street does, like, the word of the day? Like if Stogie mm. Geeks did the word of the day by Joe and you and we had a contest like at which minute and second of the episode that mm. Joe mentioned to Twa, mm. hey, it happens like every episode somehow some way yeah. I'm like oh yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah tenderloin mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> the Tatuai, I I completely love the Tatuai pork tenderloins like yeah. like uh, well, that's good super that's cool good sticks. that's good to hear that you smoke all these different other brands as well because you know when I when I hear that some of the manufacturers tell me that they smoke just their brand. I'm like, mm, okay, <laughs> and I'm not saying. It's, yeah, it's, it's not yeah. True, but, you know, people yeah. ask me that all the time, and and it's going. My answer is going to be the same. If, if I tell you that I only smoke my cigars, I'm lying. I am. Yeah. Uh, because I, I'll get I'll get bored with my own stuff if I only smoke that. Uh, and I feel that you know you always have to evolve. Uh, yeah. You know. Whether it's in life or with, with smoking, and with smoking, the only way you're going to evolve is if you keep on smoking different tobaccos. Yep, because that's how your right. palate develops. So if you're smoking, just if I just smoke Warwick all the time, I mean, I'm, my 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 palate's going to be built for just Warwick. It's not going to know anything else. So right. I gotta I gotta keep smoking, and I gotta keep smoking different blends, and then I can come back and I can make better blends for my own company. Hmm. You know. And then wow. I, I enjoy supporting other companies too, just like they, sure. you know, just like they support me, you know. Yep. So. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's super cool. Uh, I wish you a speedy recovery with your hip. Yes. Yeah. You know, I appreciate I, it. I, I wish you a speedy recovery it. with with your hip, and I thank you for your time. When you know the answer, if you could flash me an email. 
<laughs> I will. If you could flash me an email. And when you uh, are ready and you got things organized in regards to who you went with, the line, name, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, definitely okay. ping us back and we'll get you back on the show and we'll, we'll, we'll do a, de uh, a uh, debut about that for sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'd love to come back. And you gotta tell you your NBA, you gotta tell your NBA player, make sure he he knows how to use Zoom, so that he can come in. <laughs> so he, because he's gotta come in as well. Oh yeah, you know oh, he's yeah. gonna, you know, yeah. you know, he's gonna come in as well, and and make sure he has a pair of earbuds and and Zoom, and we can have both you guys on the show at once, talking about that, talk about that experience. We'll we'll get into. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which factory won the the yeah, yeah. the big debut? Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to 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 seeing what what that answer is. You know, yeah, for oh, sure. Man. Somebody wants to come in. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. I just want to. I just want to say to uh, the Still Geek listeners out there that on the War Witch, uh, our Still Geek radio, at least mine, uh, it is gonna be a box. It's gonna be a box. You oh know, yeah, def definitely worth <laughs> the box. Uh, buy a box of these because you're these this thick can pretty much. You can navigate this stick any time of the day for me because I I'm a, I'm a four o'clock in the morning guy. I get up, I have my nice dark black coffee, and with that, uh, I'll, I'll kick it up with the War Witch, you know, uh, or even in the late evening uh, if you want to relax and just take your time. Again, uh, this is a stick that for me it, it, it's definitely going to be a box rating worthy. Mm -hmm. uh, buy a box. Awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely would 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 give it a box for sure. Uh, definitely, they, they should try it. Stogie Geeks, you can go to bslcigars.net, check them out, or go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 330, and you'll be able to get the information. Uh, Eric, I want to thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. Yeah, thank you. You know, it was a pleasure you. having you, and best of luck with your decisions in the next 90 days. They seem pretty complex. Thank you. Probably, yeah, I'll be in touch. probably the most complex uh, in in the industry so far as to where you're gonna <laughs> pivot because because you get, you got two great choices for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know for yeah, sure. Bro. Awesome, Story Geeks. I want to remind you that we keep the conversation going all week long. You can go to StoryGeeks.com or Facebook.com forward slash Story Geeks. You can email all your complaints to Drew at StoryGeeks.com right. or you can email uh, comments to the both of us. I'm Joe H at StoryGeeks.com. Don't forget to tell your friends about the podcast. And I want to remind you that behind every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and shop local. Special thanks to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, Placencia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars. Story Geeks, we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Be safe.